Green 18. Green 19. Fournette, the running back. Eight seconds, seven seconds. Brady the throw. Throws a deep pass downfield. Got Scotty Miller in the open. Face the catch. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Rodgers fires quickly end zone and caught for the touchdown by Allen Lazard. Just driving here back at the 21, dropping, three-step drop, goes on the end zone, hot ball, touchdown Tampa Bay! Mike Evans reaches up with one hand. Just bends to his left. Comes underneath and the pass is incomplete, out of bounds, now they say complete. Third and one, Rodgers play action, looks to the end zone, Rainbow turning up. 11-yard line, there's the snap, Mahomes running to his right, look out, he may run, Mahomes directly, no, toward the end, down. bad, no, intercepted, picked off in the end zone, Fox are going to beat the Chiefs. But enough about our, well, anyway, but enough about our <laughs> bullshit with our past lives as but that, terrible about football being players. Losers. <laughs> <laughs> What is up, guys? I am back, and this is episode five of the Battle for the Bay podcast with Draz. Say hi. Hi. Howdy doody. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we got quite the amount planned. Um, you might it might actually run below an hour for the first time in this series, because <laughs> let's let's hope. <laughs> let's hope, because a good chunk of it's just going to be news. But before that, we do have a tier list set up for this episode. Um, we're ranking quarterbacks. Yeah, the way we're going to do it is we're going to rank all of them on the tier list and then say our top five once we're done. Because you could say two, for example, we could put Daniel Jones in F tier and we could put uh, Caleb Williams in F tier. I, I don't think we will put Caleb Williams in F tier, but just in, as an example, but Caleb Williams is a higher F tier than Daniel Jones is. Right, he's he's be, he's better. Yeah, so you'll see. To those A and S tiers, we'll basically be like, all right, well, these guys are the best of the best. Like, these let's five. say, let's say, like, if we have Will Levis and F, and then Justin Herbert, like, slightly in front of them, like, just for an example, because I'm showing like visual. If Justin Herbert's right in front of them, that means he's better. Yeah, I only Perfect. did that for visual. That does not mean that Justin Herbert's F. He's far from an F. He's he's actually below F. There's a new tier called Justin Herbert. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Well, shall we start from top down or bottom up? Top down because. Uh, I'll say this. Yeah, S will be relatively easy. Yeah. Yeah, I think you'll agree with me on what I'm saying. Unless your name is Mahomes or Allen, you're not an S. Uh, I might would put a. One more in there, but we'll see. Well, I don't think Lamar Jackson's at S for me, if that's what you're thinking of. Uh, it's not who I was thinking of, but we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to it. <laughs> well, obviously, you got Mahomes. He's literally the best player in the league. <laughs> and then you got Jackson, who... Well, not Jackson. You got Josh Allen, who is the second-best quarterback at least to me, in the NFL. I, w- I, w- I would say so, too. <laughs> I mean, I feel bad for him because you know he's good, but he has nothing to show for it. He has, I mean, nothing, that's, but, that's... <laughs> he has nothing but a couple of Pro Bowls and a couple of All Pros. That's it. He's slowly becoming Dan Marino. <laughs> I feel like two is the new Dan Marino. <laughs> no, two, no two, is not a, two is not the new Dan Marino. He's just lucky because he got a giant contract for like one and a half years of good work. I could say the same thing about I could say the same thing about uh, Jordan Love, but start (laughs) top top left (laughs) to the right. We'll go. (laughs) Who's our first quarterback for rating? On my (laughs) screen, it's Will Levis. Um, On my screen, it's Trevor Lawrence. (laughs) All right, I guess I'm doing Trevor Lawrence. All right, so Trevor Lawrence. Here's the thing with him. He just signed the biggest contract, QB contract, in NFL history. He's good uh, when he's not hurt. Yeah, I was about to say, he's he, he, it's, he's kind of an unknown 
quantity because the first year he had a bad coach. Second year kind of had a bad uh, no. uh, offensive line as far as running first, goes. And first, the third year, year, first year was Urban Meyer. No one's yeah. going to work with Urban Meyer. Second year, so his was, second year was effectively his first year. Yeah, NFL, second year was with Doug Peterson. And they did relatively well. They went 9-8, and eight and they had a comeback game against the Chargers after he threw four interceptions. Yep. And then this year, uh, the, the, this year, the last the last year, he was hurt for most of the season. Yeah, no wonder why he didn't perform well. He was getting chucked out there. Yeah, their, their offensive line, their run game wasn't very good. They had to rely on passing too much, and then they also lost uh, Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk, yes. Yeah, they Wait. lost Christian Kirk. Christian, no, not Christian Kirk. And, um, Calvin Ridley. I think Christian. Yeah, Calvin, Kirk. Calvin Ridley was their was their uh, wide receiver one this year because Christian Kirk was hurt. I remember now. It's it's definitely Christian Kirk. Okay. Well, I think he was the best wide receiver on third down until he got injured. Yeah, I think I would put Trevor Lawrence right now at a B, a little bit overhyped. But I put him at a solid B. He's good when he's not. Yeah. He's good when he's not hurt. He's kind of a good start because it's like, is he better? Or are you better or worse than Trevor Lawrence? That's <laughs> a good B. I think he's like directly in the middle of like, B. Like maybe not like, high B, not a low B, in the middle of B. like B to B minus. Agreed. All right. Next up for me is Dak Prescott. <laughs> oh man. Oh, um, well, we're starting off with a couple of doozies, aren't we? Yeah, I'm not going to think too much of it, and I'm going to put him in high B tier, slightly above Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I'll agree. Can't win big games right now. He can't. But that's. It whether, could be a Dallas that, Cowboys whether problem. Whether that's a him problem a him or a problem. Cowboys problem. Either way, he can't do it. If he not, could fly up not, to A if he goes somewhere else next year. Very fucking bad. If, he's not eight, if it's not an 8-9 and nine Bucks team or a... Or a very weak Seahawks team. He's not winning against them in the playoffs. All right. Who's your next guy? <laughs> Trip, Trippy. Trippy himself. Oh. Hello, Our Daniel first Jones. first F-tier is laying down the fucking <laughs> first F-tier. Well, he's got... Well, okay, okay. I won't be too mean. He's D-tier. I'm very a Duke bo- fan, bro. Very he's bottom- he's F tier. He's very bottom of the D <laughs> tier for me. Reason being, he has at least a playoff win. That's more than other starting quarterbacks on this list. Yeah, he's an F tier. I'm sorry. <laughs> like he's very bottom. That of the pick D- in the preseason this year, pick <laughs> six. It was he's, just no. he's almost he's almost F tier. Like one more bad game, and then he will be an F tier for me. But he's very bottom. He's at the very bottom of a D tier for me. Nobody wants. Yeah, he can definitely turn it around. I will say. I will say like that. he has potential. We'll again, we we say this about every bad quarterback. He has potential, but I'm running out of patience. Show me something now that you yep. got Malik Neighbors in a decent defense. All right, who's next on your list? Jalen Hurts. That's A tier, straight going into A tier. All right. Yeah. Totally I'm, I'm not. Put a, him totally in... not. Totally not Oklahoma bias. No, I'll I'll definitely put him in A tier because I think he I think he deserves to be there. Not quite S tier, but I think he's mid to high A tier. I agree. Again, I last year you can kind of write off for the fact that the offensive system around him was terrible. It was nothing but Man, the tush I, push, and it was nothing but the it it was nothing but the tush push and runs up the middle. Not even not even runs of the middle. They were running inside zone, which is running from shotgun all the time. So the majority of their play action was from shotgun. I, I, ironically, they're the most uh, – their their offense and the way they played last year is the – what I'm most schooled on. Like I watched multiple like people break down like NFL analysts and stuff like that break down their offense and why it was – so bad compared to previous years and for whatever reason like i said i know more about that the last year's eagles than i did the last year's packers offensive system <laughs> so you have the reverse problem of the eagles 
Oh, yeah, we did. 100%. Hey, who's worse? Freaking not. On, <laughs> who's worse, Barry or um, Patricia? <sighs> Patricia, probably. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I don't like Barry at all. Joe Barry. Packers defensive coordinator is the worst. Yeah. But he did pick it up in the second half of the season, so nope. He a little. Had, he he. You guys almost lost to the Panthers. Yeah, we <laughs> should have lost. Actually, my my fucking friend who's a Panthers fan was livid because of some of the the calls in that game, and I can't really say that we didn't deserve to lose that game. Hey, it's Packers. <laughs> it's Packers tradition. Yeah, we lose to people we're not supposed to lose to, but then we beat people like the uh, the. Uh, Cowboys in the playoffs. <laughs> and then we always lose to the 49ers. <laughs> that's a that's a perennial curse. <laughs> perennial curse is we lose to we get one mulligan or two mulligans during the season and then we beat the Cowboys and lose to the <laughs> We should be America's team because we beat the Cowboys every single uh playoffs and make everybody happy. <laughs> All right, who's your next quarterback? Let's Joe Burrow. Gone Joe Burrow. That is easily another A tier. I would not Joey put. Burr. I would not put him above Jalen Hurts for the sole reason because he is so injury prone. It's partially his offensive line. Well, I know it's part of. Bunch, I know. I know it's partially his offensive line, but the point is he still gets hurt a lot. Well, the thing is, the thing is, only he could figure my, out. Only he could tweak his arm in a way that needs Tommy John, just by throwing a football. He, so the the way his injury was, that's where I'm like, I would put him near S tier, but he's coming back from an injury on his throwing hand. And so it might take him a little bit. And he's coming off of this worst start to this to a season that he's had in a while. Well, I mean since that's he came normal. into the league, really. That's normal for him. He always starts out cold. Yeah. But, yeah, last year was particularly bad. Well, I trust him in the playoffs more than I do Hurts, to be honest. Mm. But I do think Hurts right now is better. All right. Who's next for you? For me? Yeah. It's Will Levis. He was in the – he was in the front. All right. He was I'll all put the way him. in the front for uh, whatever reason for me. All right. Um, right. I'll grab him. I'm going to put him bottom of C tier. I was about to say, I, this might surprise you, but this is he might be the lowest C tier we have, but he's going to go with a C because he actually played pretty good football last year. He did. He did. He has. But again, if the, if the Titans can work with him, they could be a problem. If the Titans can figure it, figure it out. Man has a absolute cannon of an arm. Yeah, but he also likes mayonnaise with his coffee. So complete psychopath. That's what he is. I mean, is your quarterback even good if they don't have some weird ass uh, thing? Let's see. Patrick Mahomes likes likes well done steak with ketchup. Let's see. Joe Burrow thinks he has to look like Eminem to be good. Dak Prescott can't win Aaron in the Rogers, playoffs. Aaron Rodgers, ayahuasca. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Jones tripping over himself. No, he's not good. He's just bad. <laughs> but um. That's a fair point, but at the same time, I'd kind of want quarterbacks to be semi-normal. <laughs> you know, just be a normal fair, human I mean, being. <laughs> All right, who's your next? Who's your next guy? Uh, Jordan Love. I'm going to put him in A tier. Bottom of A tier for me. He's only done he's, it for one year, he's, but he's flirting with if you high. Look at his arm. He's flirting with high B. He's flirting with high B, low A. He's between that. T- yeah. He's between those. I have to put him in A though because I we got the Dak Prescott versus Jordan Love one v one, and uh, he won that. <laughs> Let's just say we won that. <laughs> they benched him for in the fourth quarter because he he cooked their secondary. <laughs> Luke Musgrave in- with the touchdown and the dagger. I think he. I think he has a chance to be. 
if he has another, if he has an MVP caliber season this year, I would actually put him say, and he high just, a. and he just might. I mean, he's looked good, and our wide receiving cores yeah. looked really good. Yeah. All right. Who's next? For me, it's Herbert. All right, Herbert is above Burrow for me, but below Hurts. This is going to be our big difference so far. I'm going to put him in B tier. Really? Below Dak Prescott. What? He has not done shit in the league. Yes. He is basically Trevor Lawrence, just on, he's but with on more arm the talent. Chargers. What? He, good luck. <laughs> like, I know he's had, like, a lot of rough, like, things. He is he's quickly, done every... He, he is quickly taking over Drew Brees' spot as the NFL's unluckiest player. I mean, he's just Philip Rivers 2.0 to me, to be honest. That's also, uh, that's actually very sad. <laughs> but he's. I mean, that that being said, even at even at his talent level and stuff like that, right now, like he's like, very talented. He hasn't had like I'm ranking him as a quarterback. He's very talented. I think he's better than Jordan Love and Burrow right now. However, he has no help. His best weapon right now also, is though, Lad McCocky. That's it. You're talking about playoff wins too. And I yes, I am talking about playoff none. wins, but that defense folded during that defense folded against the Jaguars that year. Yeah, they got four interceptions, know. but yeah, they came right back. I the like him. Stop them. I like him. I just think he's overrated right now. And like he's gotta he's gotta have he hasn't even had he hasn't been in a conversation for MVP, Dak Prescott, Jordan Love was his second half of the season. He was near MVP uh, levels. Joe Burrow has at least been in the conversation. Jalen Hurts has been like he was the leader in MVP at one point, and they all have playoff wins. Hmm. Even Dak Prescott has playoff wins. Yeah, two of them against terrible teams. I mean, I will say, I will say this: all of the people above have had more stability at wide receiver. But again, I gotta, I still gotta give Justin Herbert a mulligan because he's on the Chargers. Nothing good That's is fair. gonna happen to a quarterback if they're on the Chargers, no matter how much talent they got. But Herbert has shown that talent more often than not, and it's shown that he can be better than Burrow and Jordan Love, at the very least. And he can stay on the right. field. Who's so, your Who's your next guy on your list? Jared Goff. Jared Goff. Again, this is another easy A for me. I'm putting him right above Herbert. I'm putting him the top of A tier. Very top of it. Oh, you actually think he's better than Hertz? If not, like, I'm... He's the guy that I said was almost S tier. He's that fucking good for me. I'm a Packers fan, and... I... There's... Goff is my guy, dude. He's... I love him as a player because of his... You know, he got traded off of the Rams, and then... I mean, he's just been really good. He's been exceptional. He definitely has the story. sad last he, year. He definitely has the story element to him. <laughs> like, I mean, he was going to be the Rams franchise quarterback. Puts up a stinker in the Super Bowl because we can't have anything good in this world. Then gets his at, then uh, gets left for dead with the Rams. Gets traded to Detroit and then revives his career under Dan Campbell. Yeah. So here's his last two seasons. Uh, 2022, he had 4,400 passing yards, 29 touchdowns, seven interceptions with a rating of 99.3, 65% completion percentage. In 2023, he had 4,500 passing yards, 30 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, a 97.9 rating. Uh, and... This last year, in 2022, Patrick Mahomes had a 
a much better season. He had 5,200 passing yards, 41 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. But last year, Goff outperformed Mahomes. I know Mahomes had uh, issues with weapons until the second half of the year, but he, they have Travis Kelsey out there, you know? Who himself was not the hottest um, this year, or last year, rather. Yeah, I, I have a lot of faith in Goff. I have a lot of faith in Goff. Put him in a high A uh, tier. Last year, I would have probably put him in a high B tier. This last season, he was my pick for MVP, and he didn't actually win MVP, but he was still around the conversation. Yeah. For me, my one of my two picks for my two picks for MVP is Goff or Jordan Love. One of those two. All right. All right, next to Sean hey. Cosby. That is an F right there. He's actually the goat at something. <laughs> he is the goat at... <laughs> He's a goat bank robber. <laughs> he... He's a criminal in more ways he... than one. <laughs> He's the greatest... He's the greatest... Uh... Well, I guess what's the... He's the greatest... Don't massage me customer de- of all time. <laughs> I about to say, don't get me demonetized. <laughs> I was trying to say it nicely, and I was trying so hard to say it nicely. But he's a he's a he's a complete f. When Daniel Jones uh, has more promise, ha, ha, shown more promise than you, honestly, and after you've got I, I that much said, money, there's a problem. Honestly, I said that Daniel Jones was going to be the bottom of f tier, but I can't physically can't, put Daniel I, Jones below. I know. I the would choose the two. if I had. A lineup of ten Daniel Jones and one Cosby, uh, ten Deshaun Watsons. I would be picking ten Daniel Jones <laughs> to go on my team. And also, Daniel Jones's contract is bad. His is ten Deshaun's, times worse. Deshaun's is worse, especially yeah. with the fact they also traded. I think for three the same first round picks for him. Yeah. So he's laughing. Right, Deshaun's well, laughing all the way to the bank. It's probably going to go all to the lawsuits, but still. All right. My next one's Bryce Young. Uh, bottom of D. Below Daniel Jones. I'm actually going to be faithful in him. I'm going to put him the very bottom. He, no matter what anybody else, whoever else I put in there, I'm putting him in C. The Carolina Midget. You're really going to throw He's your back behind him. Look. I have... I have... I have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, pity for that for that man. He Adam Thielen was his number one wide receiver last year, and was Tommy Tremble his number one tight end? <laughs> oh, Hayden Hurst actually, I think. Yeah, maybe Hayden Hurst. But I don't know. We saw that we we saw that he was he, basically. It was car- such a bad situation. No he, offensive line too. Their offensive line went from. In one season, the okay, one of the but best you gotta remember games at to Alabama, the worst. You gotta remember, he had a loaded Alabama team to go with him. Of course, he was gonna look I mean, good. Yeah. With, he, of course, he was gonna look good with that wide receiver room they had. I gotta give him faith, and then this year he's got some weapons and stuff like that. I gotta, he's gonna be the bottom of C tier. I'll give him a little bit of faith next year. If he's bad, I'm putting him in F tier. You're going to quickly <laughs> see that the Carolina Panthers are just nothing but a slate of misery when it comes to quarterbacks. They had one, and it was Cam Newton. Then he fell apart after he um, bounced away from the football in the Super Bowl. All right. But next one's Jacoby Brissett. Okay. I, don't, we'll I feel put like an Drake Mavis we'll, is going to start. We'll but. put an asterisk here and have it be either or. Because that's, yeah. that's a distinct possibility. Jacoby, I'm gonna put I, it in D tier regardless. I'll say Jacoby. I put actually at low C. Actually, yeah, low C sounds good for both of them. I don't like Drake. I'm gonna put him at the top of the. I don't like Drake May. I do not like drafting quarterbacks in the first round if they're the quote unquote toolsy once in a generational talent. We've seen that with Zach Wilson. We've seen that with Anthony Richardson. I like Anthony Richardson, but. I don't know how good he can be. He only has four games. I'm on record for saying I like him. I am. But I don't know how good he can be. 
We saw it with Tim Drake Tebow. Drake May has looked saw... decent, though. Oh, Everybody can I mean, look decent in yes. preseason. That's true. Ugh. But all right, I'm fine. Putting, Tyler Murray's my next one. Yeah, I'm fine putting. I'm fine putting Jacoby and Drake May in the bottom of C tier. I'm fine with that so far. Kyler Murray. I put him in the top of D. So Ugh. I gotta put him above Kyler Drake. Murray. I gotta put him above Will Levis. I gotta. He's C tier for me. We see what he can be. He's just had, like Herbert, he's just had a terrible situation on his hands. I'm going to put him at the bottom of B, the very bottom of B. Okay. Again, I don't love Kyler Murray. They're, he's he's he has the hi, he has the same height problem as he he has the same height problem as um Bryce Young. <laughs> he's only 5'10", but he can run and we can see what he can do when he's on the move. If he's on the move, you got to make sure that your cornerbacks have He's taken... actually got arm pa- power too. Yeah, he, he has can... a lot of arm power. If he if he pay like if he actually studies film and does stuff like he's had certain stretches where he's been the best quarterback in the league. Not a full season, but there's been stretches of five or six games where he's just been unstoppable. So I got to put him in B tier just from that. Like we'll see. So we'll see. Yeah, he could get higher. He can go. He can go lower, but I'm putting him at the bottom of of B. Yeah. All right, Matt Stafford, top of B tier for me. I'm going to put him just above Trevor Lawrence, so below Herbert and below uh, Prescott. Like, but I think that's respe- I think that's rather between. respectable for Stafford because ever since the Super Bowl. You saw him. You saw stats for him just start going down. He, he was he's injured. had a he was, lot of. He was yeah. injured in twenty twenty two. He's I, had a bad offensive yeah. line since too. They, say, they had their star was, center. Was it center or right that, guard retire? That was Andrew Whitworth, and he was a tackle. Oh, he was a tackle. Yeah. Ever okay. since he retired, that offensive line was bad. Um, ever since Cooper Cup got hurt, they haven't been able. He hasn't really had the best stats. Then Puka Nakua came and fixed that, but like then he was hurt. Then so. he was hurt. <laughs> like yeah, I so it, like, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Put him above Trevor Lawrence for now. Like again, if he has another I'm bad record, season. I am on record for saying this about Stafford. I think this will be the year where he starts showing his age. He's been in the league for what twelve years now. And he has a lot of injuries with him. This will be the year he starts to show his age and the wear and tear. They'll still make the playoffs, barely. But by the time the playoffs come, you're going to see that he's not the same. Well, I would I would probably agree with that. But for this season, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. Again, I don't high disagree B for with me, what right, you're saying. But he's high B for me, and I'll leave it at that. We do this next year. He might be C tier. All right. Okay, Brock Purdy. We were talking about how Bryce Young was being carried by weapons in Alabama. Uh, I think by default I have to put him behind Trevor Lawrence. Like and put him above Kyler Murray in B tier. I kind of have to do it. I got to put him above Trevor Lawrence. He's literally just like like the middest the middest quarterback mid has ever seen. I, I, he, Trevor Lawrence has a higher ceiling, though. Like in my well, opinion. I know, but I know he has a higher and ceiling. But when has Trevor Lawrence ever had Eric Armstead or the weapons that Purdy has? That's you know, fair. it's like well, I know. If, but... I, if you put if you put Trevor Lawrence in Brock Purdy's position, hell, if you put if you put any of the other quarterbacks in B tier in the 49ers position. They, their their team gets better. Well, I mean, I will team. say there's a reason why Trey Lance was picked was there's a reason why Trey Lance was let go in favor of Brock. There's a reason for that. Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, I don't want to because people people talk shit on game managers all the time. It, it's not like being a game manager is not, not the problem. worst fate in the NFL. But there's a reason why they went with him because, like, I think that at the end of the day. They didn't have to pay Brock Purdy for the first, you know, 
Yeah, the first I don't while, think so they, he had no money. I still think he's. I still think he's on that rookie on. I think he's still on that rookie contract. I think for one more year, yeah. Yeah, I, and so it's like that's the reason why they did it, so they could spend as much money like trading for Chase Young and you know doing that, be very aggressive, and put weapons around him. You know, but once when you're paying him thirty plus million dollars a year, and you can't put all of that stuff around him, like say, you're, gonna, maybe he'll do the they're Tom probably going to lose Brandon Ayuk to the say, Steelers, maybe he'll, right? Maybe he'll do the Tom Brady thing and just not sign a whole lot of money. Like, we'll sign see. for years we'll instead of money, like, basically. I, I do like Purdy. As, like, as a person, he's pretty chill. Like, I like, like the story. I like who him. he is. Like, you know, Mr. Irrelevant is now relevant. You hear that a lot. But. I don't hate the 49ers either, even coming like, from I, yeah, I don't, I don't, don't, like, hate, the I don't hate the 49ers. You know, I just want somebody to win the Super Bowl that's not the Chiefs. Yeah. And they failed us, so fuck the 49ers. They failed us twice. <laughs> Hold on. All right, they failed us once. About to say, the first time around, we didn't know what was about to happen. Yeah. We just went, oh, cool, the Chiefs won their first Super Bowl in 50 years. Fantastic. Then they All became right. what they are now. Geno Smith. Uh, I got to put him below Trevor Lawrence. He's bottom of a B tier for me. Whoa, that's a big difference because he's going in D tier for me. Wow. Last right, year state your case. was last year was not a very good year for the Seahawks. Um let's see what his stats were last year. Uh Gino I also think he he's uh he's had yeah, he he had thirty six hundred passing yards, twenty touchdowns, nine interceptions, which is not horrid, but it's also like I mean Tell, tell me why they should keep going with him and not draft or let a young player put, be put in his position, right? Well, that's fair, but we, again... Will we, Levis? Why would I put him above Will Le- Levis? Because he has more experience and knows his way around an offense. What, what's... I mean, really, though, like, he... How old is he? How old is he now? Gino, I think, is... I, he's at least 30. How old is Gino Smith? Let me look. <sighs> 33. Oh, Lord. Yeah, why... Why They... this The Seahawks don't fucking... They trade away Russell Wilson, who's 35, and replace him with a 33-year-old quarterback. 30, Where's the 30, logic? Thirty-one at the time they tr- thirty-one at the time yeah. they traded him. Yeah, they traded. They but they replaced well, I mean, him Gino, for someone that's two Gino, years younger. Gino and, was a backup at that point in time. He wasn't traded. He signed there and was there for a couple of years already. Well, I'm I'm saying they traded away Russell Wilson. Well, you, you know, also got to remember they also traded for um they also traded Drew for Locke. Sam Howell. No, Drew Locks and they traded for Sam Howell. Yeah, Drew Locks with um the Giants now. Well, he was he was at the Seahawks. Oh well, yeah, he year. was there. That that was part of the trade. I think Sam Long, Howell. But... I think you start Sam Howell. Like if they start Geno Smith, like I think it's just a waste of time. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I just find it to be an incredible waste of time uh, well, on a roster that's very I'm, talented. Like I'm fine with Geno as a quarterback. You know, he's not the best thing in the world, but he can win you games. That's why he's in the bottom of B tier. He doesn't do. The reason all... why he's in D D tier a... for me is he's just Jacoby Brissett. No, no, no. He's better than Jacoby. I'm sorry. Uh, he, he, All right. He, uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Just, I think he's better than Jacoby. He's bottom of a B tier for me. Cutting it close to C, but bottom of a B. I will say he's, the, he for me, he's like the top of D tier. Hmm. Almost a C tier. All right. Tua turned the ball over. We, uh, I'm uh, going to put him. This is tough. This is legitimately is really tough for tough. me because, again, we got two of the same quarterback here. The only difference is that Brock Purdy. The only difference is that Tua has Polynesian flair to him. I'm going to put him one below Brock Purdy. But I'll say again, Tua has a Polynesian flair to him. He's a great guy. Trevor Lawrence, not Trevor Lawrence. 
Brock Purdy is just some normal dude on the street. <laughs> the thing, the thing with both that, of them is the they're same. in the same fucking tier. Like, if we, they should almost go into their own tiers. Like, we have no idea because I mean, they have all the capabilities. Like, that's the thing is, Tua has everything about him is perfect for a starting level level quarterback, right? But he didn't play well at the start, and now that he's playing well, he's got Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle as a wide receiver room in a Mike McDaniel's offense that has been absolutely insanely good. Yeah, and we've seen what it can be. Like we saw both Skylar Thompson and Mike White tear it up with that offense. Yeah, and so it's like okay, well, I think he's better than those guys, and I think he's better than a lot of people in the NFL. But look, put him in a situation that is not as favorable and see what happens. Like put him in the same situation as Matthew Stafford. And I think that he, I think that he throws 20 interceptions. Sounds about right. Same thing with uh, Brock Purdy. You know, it's like put, put him behind a line. That's not good. And and Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy does not freeze up in games. Literally like Tua can't perform in the cold. That's been proven. I really like Tua though. Like I don't I don't mind Tua. I still well, think he him and Brock have a great I still great think he should story. not have been started over Ryan Fitzpatrick in twenty twenty. But I don't mind him. I just don't want people to glaze him as if he's the next best thing when he's not. I will say this, he's already the greatest lefty quarterback of all time. Dan Marino would disagree. Is Dan I, a lefty? I'm pretty sure he was. Check on that for me. I don't me. think he was. Let me see. Uh, he right-handed. Ah, shit. I thought he was. I thought he was left-handed. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah, Dan. I don't think Dan Marino. All right. I thought he was left-handed. Well, okay. Moving on, and probably after getting myself canceled. For the Poly- for the Polynesian Flair thing. Oh boy, now I am gonna get canceled. It's Aaron Rodgers. I have to give him the same treatment that I give people like Brock Purdy <sighs> coming I, off an of injury. I got it, I dude. I got it. He's he's better than Gino, better than Trevor. I I gotta put him like smack middle of B. As of even, right now, even, I'm gonna put him above Matthew Stafford, uh, but below Herbert and uh, like Dak for now. Again, I think if he is still the Aaron Rodgers we know him as on the field next week, great things can happen. But even if he's 80 percent Aaron of Aaron Rodgers, they're a Super Bowl caliber team. Yeah, but if he's if he's chip on his shoulder, Aaron Rodgers, because the, if once again everybody's writing him off, you know, he's coming back from an injury. You know, every, every time he has that sort of stuff, he tends to get MVP seasons. He plays best when he's got a massive chip on his shoulder. The bigger the chip, the better the play from Aaron Rodgers most of the time. If he's actually washed and old, I will I would be the first to admit it. And I'll be sad, but as of right now, he's better than Matthew Stafford. All right, because we all know the Achilles injury is literally a career killer for quarterbacks. Usually. If he comes back from this and performs great, fantastic. The Jets finally have something happy to write about. If not, this is going to be more sadness, and it would not bode well for who's coming up later in the – I still think list, he's going to be in the in the league for two more years this year and next year. At again, least, he has to. I think that he has to finish the cycle. Solid he, fired. He has to get the. He has to finish the cycle. He has to go to the Vikings next. We all see this coming. It has to happen. I don't think he would go to NFC North. Time uh, is honestly. a flat. Time is a flat circle in the NFL. All right. Bonex. Okay, okay. He's uh, uh I did not like the fact that he was way overdrafted. He was second round material. However, 
Between him or Drake May, I would rather have Bo Nix. I'm putting him in the bottom. Bo Nix at least was contending for the Pac-12 championship game against Michael Penix. He's shown that he can be a great passer in much stiffer competition than what Drake May has seen at UNC. Well, the only reason I'm putting Drake May slash Jacoby Brissett above Bo Nix is because it's slash Jacoby Brissett. Well, that's fair, but I think he'd be better than both. Actually, hell, we'll I think see. I think I'd be comfortable putting him above Will Levis. Actually, fuck that. No, Will Levis played decent last year. <laughs> All right. Um, this is Gardner Minshew. <laughs> yeah, Minshew. Top magic. of C. Top of C. Top of C for me. I'm gonna put him under Will Levis. But above Bryce Young and C. He's top of C for me. He can start a game and win you some games. But he's not going to be a long-term solution. He also can throw four interceptions and lose you a game, too. Yeah, but Minshew Mania all the way, brother. Let's do this. <laughs> he Okay, so he's Jacoby Brissett with Magic. You agree with that? Okay. Oh, uh, he's he's Jacoby Brissett with, with some fucking Magic, dude. That's, that's what it is. He, now you can't get it out of your head. He's just... <laughs> He's Damn one it. of those career backups that every now and then like gets put into the starting position. But the only thing that Minshew has that Brissett doesn't is every now and then Minshew will win you a game that's like, holy shit, maybe this guy's actually a starter. Jacoby Brissett is like, I'm going to give you uh, 200 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception every game. Minshew will give you 300 yards and three touchdowns and one interception. Or he'll give you 200 passing yards no touchdowns and two interceptions. Like he's a, he's slightly more inconsistent. About to say he's but still he's almost also got he's still much almost, higher ceiling. He still almost took the Colts to the playoffs. They were oh, just yeah. one. They were just one incomplete pass away from doing it. Trust me, I'm I'm. I think the two most underrated quarter quarterbacks in the league, maybe like there's different there's different people that you could put in there. Um. Uh, but the two most underrated i would just off the top of my head is Minshew and taylor heineke those two yeah taylor heineke i if they would have started him the entire year last year at the falcons they probably win the nfc south he can go out and win games i mean he can lose games for you too but well he was still better than desmond ritter oh for sure <laughs> for sure all right all right speaking of commanders jalen daniel <laughs> Jalen Daniels, um, let's see. You're going in C tier, but where do I put you? I'm actually gonna put him above. I gotta put him Will above. Bo- I gotta put him above Bo Nix here, man. Again, I I'm think put he him was, as the top. I of think he was start. the best rookie this entire year. I think he was the best draft pick here. For where the Commanders are, the like, I'm I I see now because they they got rid of a guy who had a pretty decent rookie season, right? Well, yeah, uh, they moved. They got rid of Sam Howell for him. Of, yeah, they they moved off of Sam Howell, and I was like, "Why would you not build off of Sam Howell?" It's because they got Jaden Daniels, and he mm-hmm. looks already better than Howell did. <laughs> like, it, it it's like his his floor is where where already above. Yeah, Howell. his floor like, is it, where stealing. His floor is where Howell stealing was. Yeah, of course, I think that Howell could be better. In the future, but yeah, immediately the, though we could immediately though the ceiling that that uh, Howell had last year, it, he's already above that just in his floor. But yeah, it, uh, all I, right. I guess that's all I have to say about it. <laughs> well, um, another easy F. Hello, Sam Darnold. He's <laughs> he he's, he's got to be better than Deshaun. JJ he's McCarthy. got to be better than De, than Deshaun Watson. I can't, Dude, I can't. I can already tell you. I can't spoiler do it in, alert! I can't do it in good conscience. Watson's going to be the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> no happy endings for you him. Give me, you, the thing is, is Sam Darnold is just Deshaun Watson without a terrible contract. Change my <laughs> mind. Change my mind. No, that's disrespectful. At least Sam Darnold has respect for his fellow human beings. <laughs> at least Sam Darnold. At least Sam Darnold's a decent human being. <laughs> He it's might not throw his four fault interceptions sees, just like his, Deshaun Watson. It's not his fault he sees ghosts. 
All right. All My right. next one is Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams. Um, below Jaden Daniels. Middle of C tier. Same. Same. I'm actually going to I still gonna think he is an ass-sniffing trader that followed Lincoln Riley to Los Angeles for NIL money. But <laughs> I, he, I regrettably have to say he did look somewhat decent even though most of his passes were dump-offs that went for long yardage. We're... We're about to get to our two. I, I just looked at the next two on my list. Oh, for fuck's sake. We're about to get to our sake. two biggest difference, differences. Well, we might as well um, get rid of it now, right? Uh, let's see. My next two are... Yeah, I know, Cousins, I know, I know. This is sa- they're the same for us. They're the same for us. <laughs> and CJ Stroud. All right, Kirk Cousins. Right, Kirko. I'm putting him near the bottom of B tier. Right below Aaron Rodgers. Right above Dude. Trevor Lawrence. Kirk Cousins, he Wait, did is I a actually stat just rank him lower than you? Whoa. That's actually surprising. I put him at the bottom of B tier below Kyler Murray. <laughs> All right, but here's the thing about Kirk Cousins. He is a stat merchant. He disappears when it matters most. Not to also mention, well, like Aaron Rodgers, he's coming off an Achilles injury. That say, does not bode off, well. For me, for me... It's, he's oh, and he's off coming off—he's an coming off an Achilles injury from he, the middle of the season, and he's going to be. Uh, and he's under a going, coach. And he's under a coach named Marheem Morris, who was terrible. And he's terrible got a, a. He's got a rookie quarterback sitting behind him. That can replace and, him at any moment. <laughs> and he just lost. Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison as wide receiving threats, and swapped it out for, Hawkinson. and then swapped it out for um, Kyle Pitts and Kyle Pitts uh, Drake and London. Drake London, who themselves have been yeah. wasted potential. It's a Not their fault, but I mean they're wasted. But they're wasted potential as far as when they were drafted and how the coaching staff utilized them. That's what I, I mean by wasted this, potential. The Falcons could be a playoff contender. If they run play action, if they can run the ball with Bajan Robinson and set up play action because they have good, a decent offensive line, they could actually do something. Dude, you're forgetting. But if they rely on Kirk Cousins dropping back, it's this is where it's Raheem Morris. Tampa Bay dealt with him for three years, and we fired him after those three years because every single season, yes, this was with Josh Freeman as quarterback, I believe. It was four and twelve, four and twelve, three and thirteen. I may be off a couple of games, but that's what I remember. It was terrible with him as a coach. And Tampa Bay is laughing at Atlanta for the fact that they hired him. Yes, his defense looked fantastic, but it's gonna look fantastic when you have Von Miller and Aaron Donald on the same team. Terrible. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know for. I don't. Yes, I don't know enough. Bob about Miller him, so. was not there last year. Well, he wasn't there for the last couple of years when Raheem Morris was there. But you still had Aaron Donald. You know, Aaron Donald was Darnold. one man. <laughs> Aaron Donald. <laughs> I'm so. I'm. I'm so pissed right now. Yeah, we, we're already 47 I'm, minutes into this. we yeah, got to get going. I'm, I'm, almost... I'm pissed. All right, tangent about Raheem Morris over. All right, CJ Stroud. Right, Stroud. Oh, God, what do I do here? I'm going to put him at the top of B. I can't do Very top of B. <laughs> he's, he's, ah. a, he's in B tier, but I, uh, I got I, I to gotta put him above Trevor Lawrence. He's right below Kirk Cousins for me. Yes, he had a fantastic rookie year, but we always see fantastic rookie years from quarterbacks. Will they sustain it? I hope to God, for the sake of the Ohio State QB joke, he doesn't. I'm going to put, see, Jordan Love for me is the bottom of A. Like, he's going to be, always be the bottom of A. Um, the For me, C.J. Stroud is the very top of B. I can almost put him in the A. Again, it's been They're one like just year. just a hair. If he improves, then you can put him in A. I mean, it's the same thing with Jordan Love, though. Like, it's been one year. Jordan Love, though, his second half of his year was like... 
Second half is a year look like Aaron Rodgers 2.0. It looked like Aaron Rodgers 2.0 out there. Like, it, it was ridiculous, dude. Mm. All right. <laughs> Russell, Russell Wilson. Wilson. Didn't we really just do, both do sing songy versions of it? All right. <laughs> I really don't want to be disrespectful, but I I, I got it. No, I'm doing it. He's he's top of D tier for me. <laughs> he is top of D tier. He sucked. <laughs> First year in Denver was a total shit show. Second year, he improved according to the stats, but he was benched twice. I. Okay, so as part of this is like my opinions of how things are going to go this season. Like this is why Kirk Cousins lower. It's not just simply based on previous stats, right? The only reason the it's, Steelers it's, are going to make the playoffs or have a winning record is cuz Mike Tomlin is like he has a he has a deal with Satan or something to never have a losing season. That's the only thing. Well, and they 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 upgraded a defense somehow. That's true, but still I put him, he's the top of F tier for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, if this the was, only a, thing if this I was like Jordan Love, Russell I would Wilson not change right his now. thing. If, the only reason I, the only thing I like about Russell Wilson is it's fucking funny to me that he's being paid by the Broncos to be on the Steelers. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that is the only fucking thing I find funny. The ride never ends. <laughs> All right, Lamar <laughs> Jackson. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'm going to do this. Near the top of A tier. Yeah, A tier. Below Jalen Hurts, above Jared Goff. He has two MVPs on him. I'm putting him, him. Below, below Goff. He has uh, two MVPs on him, but his problem is that he lays an egg in the playoffs every single year. He, he, he is both the... Best thing and the worst thing about the Ravens at times. Like, you can interchange Jalen Hurts and the and Lamar Jackson for all I care. But I, I would say they're relatively interchangeable. I would say Jalen Hurts is more consistent passing, but he's had better weapons. So Yeah, well I'll say Lamar Jackson has never had a good um receiver on him. Mark Andrews is kind of like Mark Andrews into, is like, fantastic, but Yeah. So it's like I, I I hate to give I hate to be too hard on Lamar Jackson because he gets a lot of shit for not being a good passer. But it's like, well, I mean, it's he, it, it's, it's he's not had the weapons Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts, even Jared Goff has have had. Well, I know, you know? it's so not it's the like, fact that he's not a great passer; it's the fact that it, people are giving him credit as the best quarterback when he barely throws over three five hundred yards. Yeah, yeah. that's the I, that's I the part that. that bothers me. It's not Lamar Jackson; it's the people that glaze him. I thought he would be perennially injured too, and he has not been. So, well, I mean, he's had a couple of bad years with injuries, but I thought he would be hurt every year, though. <laughs> like he was super small. Like you know, he was never sliding for a run. He, he, mm. I thought he would be perennially injured, but he hasn't been. And honestly, I just like him as a like he's he's I, I like him as a player. All right. Anthony Richardson, I'm putting him above Levis, below Knicks. Uh, I'm actually going to put him for now below Levis. I mean, him but and Levis a... are basically the same kind of quarterback. They're very, they got rocket arms and very talented physically wise, but they haven't proved yeah. it outside of a couple of games. I've only seen, yeah, essentially. They're interchangeable. I would actually agree with that, that they're basically, I whichever. I don't feel 100% good putting like, Richardson behind or in front of Levis. The difference they should is that, be in the same spot. The difference is that Anthony Richardson has Michael Pittman and Alex Pierce. Levis has nothing. <laughs> he has Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley, yeah. He flamed out uh, after one game. There's a couple of other. Gabe Davis, I think. Gabe Davis. He went to Jacksonville. No, that's the, the, the Jacksonville. Who else was it? Hopkins I think it, is still there. I, yeah, D Hop's still there, but how much did that really help? I swear they had somebody. Well, whatever. They're interchangeable. Maybe. Yeah, interchangeable. All right. Richardson probably will have a better season. 
Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Um, this is going to be May to- Baker. This is going to be complete bias on my part. Better than Geno, better than Trevor Lawrence, better than Shroud, better than Cousins. Right between them. Middle of B tier. He's going to be on the slightly lower side of B tier for me. Well, yeah, he's slightly lower, Uh, like not completely in the middle, but, you know, he's above CJ Stroud. He's above Kirk Cousins. He's below Aaron Rodgers. He's above Kirk Cousins and he's above uh, Murray for me, but he's right in the tier of. uh, Brock Purdy, Tua, and Baker. Like I would say, I would say that he's more proven than than some of them. But at the same time, he's also had really bad seasons. Yeah. He was on the Browns, so honestly, I think he's got the same issues that they do, proving it wise. He had a really good season this last year, but I think he's got to put another one up to be considered higher for me. Because, like I said, he was on the he was on the goddamn Browns and. Had one good season there, and now he's had one good season as well. Well, I mean, the, 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 it was not his fault. I know it wasn't his fault, but with the, say, he kept getting the thrown fact back that he out almost there after never his started kept again. Uncle, the fact that he almost like never got a starting role again, <laughs> like he went from the Panthers to the Rams and then finally landed the Bucks. He's had one decent year. I mean, he got his extension. Um, and so we'll we'll be able to see further. I I can't put him any higher though. Objectively, right. Tua and Brock has been better. Yeah, those two have definitely been better. Like I won't disagree with that. All right, um, Derek Carr, you are top of D tier for me, buddy. <laughs> be lucky I didn't. I... Be lucky I'm not worse. <laughs> I'm going to put him below Gino and D. Ooh. Like here's the problem with Derek Carr. He looks good once the season doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> as soon as you expect any, I hope he has a better as season soon this as you year, expect but I don't expect anything that. from him. He blows up. <laughs> but especially when he went to that playoff game when he finally made it to the playoffs and his leg exploded. <laughs> I actually think it exploded before the playoff game, but still. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Which leaves us the last two quarterbacks that are one and two in S tier. Yeah, they're already been sorted. <laughs> <laughs> so, my top five, according to this tier list Mahomes, Allen, Hertz, Jackson, Goff. Those are my top five. Yeah, my five to one here is Hertz, Jackson, Goff, uh, Allen and Mahomes. All right, so we got relatively the same. We got the same thing, just in different ways. Yeah, All I right. have golf much higher, but I, I in golf we trust. That is the tier list. Screenshot it. If we're wrong at the end of the season, we're wrong at the end of the season. This is what we're dealing with right now. I, the only person I think that I was really harsh to is Russell Wilson, but yeah, no, I was, I was very. You were harsh. You put him in F. <laughs> Dude, I just, he, oh, I, I, what, do you blame me though? I mean, really, I do, do not you blame me. Like, he should be an F tier simply from saying Broncos country, let's ride. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And he had a bad preseason too. Like, it's like he did not help himself at all. Yeah, both you, it's going to be a crapshoot at quarterback no matter who they choose. Yeah, I I do not have a lot of faith. Hey, look, like, the tier list took us about an hour. I'm about to go, go. over an hour. I have a lot of people in B tier. I just sent it to you. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be going over an hour in recording time here, but with our tier list done, that brings us to the news. I excellent excellent I hope, segue. <laughs> so, for starters. Last preseason games of the year have been played. Tampa Bay, we beat the we beat the Dolphins by ten points. Kyle Trask looked great, surprisingly. Cody Thompson, I believe he's been cut now, but he had a great game. 
And our starting offense was very fluid looking whenever the they were in there for the one series. Without Mike without Mike Evans, I might add. But other than that, I don't have too much to say about the game other than sweet, we are two and one in the preseason. Uh <laughs> I have more for for uh, the, the 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 cuts for Packers and stuff like that. We'll get to that. As we'll far get to as that. Packers and the Ravens, Lamar Jack. The only thing that that was interesting is Lamar Jackson told uh, Jordan Love, "See you in the Super Bowl." So <laughs> Lamar Jackson seems to think it's going to be he Ravens. He thinks he can break the, the curse. He thinks he can break his own playoff curse. That, that's the only thing of note that came from that <laughs> from the Packers and Ravens game. That's all I've seen on on social media it's nothing about like how the teams play so, you know like, yeah you're not like going to talk it's about how, simply, you're not going to talk about how the packers beat the shit out of the ravens <laughs> there's no point it's a preseason that's fair we lost we lost what who was the broncos 26 to 3 and we beat the shit out <laughs> of the 26 to 2 it, it, the scores don't 26 matter 26 <laughs> to 2 all right bucks all right. bucks cuts i'm going to refresh the page just in case anything else happened Updated at 4.30 yesterday. So, here's what we got. We got all the jargon about key position battles and everything, but here are the cuts. Keenan Isaac, Chris McDonald, Tyreek Funderburk. Oh, wait, never mind. That's not it. Those are bubble players. I'm an idiot. All right, cuts. We got rid of Zach Triner. We got who was our long snapper. We replaced him with Evan Devers. We cut Andrew Hayes. Thank God. Riley Webb, Newland Cooney, Kalen Deloach, you know, a bunch of no names here. Tanner Canoe, who caught a touchdown pass in the Dolphins game, was cut. We put Rakeem Jarrett and Chase Edmonds on IR. We waived several other players, including a, a tight end we signed from the UFL. We also cut Sterling Shepard, who I was hoping to make the wide receiver room to have another weapon for Baker Mayfield. We cut Keenan Isaac. Well, that was the one that could turn my head. Keaton Isaac looked very good in the preseason. He looked better than the other corner we had, Josh Hayes. Why did we decide to go with Josh Hayes? Keaton and Isaac must, played better. Played way things, better. There's other things. They, you know. Yes, I know special speed. teams. I know special also, teams bullshit. Yeah, but, I was going to say special teams, and then on top of that, uh, on top of that, they could like the other player, but like he could just be more likable in the locker room. Maybe it could come down to that. If you're going to be a backup corner, you know, being well liked might keep you on a team where, you know. Mm -hmm. But I'll say, in the cut deadline was actually about an hour ago, I think. So these I'm, are I'm actually up bubbly today. about this one. I'm actually bubbly about it. Yeah, I know which one. But other than other than Keenan Isaac and John Walford, I can't really say much that has surprised me as far as cuts are concerned. But I know there's something you're very excited about to talk about with Green Bay. If I could go down to the cuts, if I could please go down to the cuts, right here, list of moves. Okay, wide receiver, offensive tackle, kicker. Look who it is, Drez. Anders Carlson is gone. <laughs> Who'd you replace him with? Yes. Uh, I think we're actually in a rookie battle. It was a rookie off. I don't, I don't, uh, I can't remember, to be honest. <laughs> but we also cut both of our quarterbacks. I think that because yeah, Sean of the Clifford preseason, and Michael Pratt. I think single handedly, Sean Clifford and Michael Pratt, because of the preseason, were cut. And <laughs> Malik Willis was traded for simply because of how bad they played. Again, I don't mind Michael Pratt. I would love to have him as a as a third string quarterback. Apparently the Packers don't. Uh, let's see. Uh my shit fell on my wall. Greg Joseph? Maybe Greg, Greg Joseph? Oh no. You're fucked. Maybe. <laughs> but that's no, maybe maybe not. Maybe not. Let's see. Big change. Team will release. Yeah, Greg Joseph might like, make the team, but this is not a guarantee. Yeah, I think I think that right now we're just looking for somebody. Gotcha. 
All right, well, that is... He sealed his fate. He sealed his fate. Did you see the in the preseason game, the last preseason game, and what Andrew, Andrews Carlson did? Yes. Everybody, Packers were, like, super excited. Like, oh, he hit a 54-yard field goal, and then he shanked a 32-yarder. <laughs> <laughs> he had the Matt, and they, he got, had, they cut him the next day or, like, he had the, made, the, like two he, days later. He had the Matt like, Gay oh, problem. Oh, All right, well... I mean, he's just bad. He's just terrible. I feel bad for him, but, you know learn how to kick you got one job buddy all right now it's time for our stuff on espn first things first <sighs> cowboys and cd lamb agreed to a four-year 136 million dollar deal making him the second highest paid wide receiver in nfl history that's on he's the second best wide receiver in the league right now well <laughs> spoiler for in the uh, coming up for rankings maybe if we do wide receivers at some point yeah definitely <laughs> he, second best in the league should be second most paid so I think that's on thing, but that also waves or raises the question: Why not? Uh, why did you wait this long? <laughs> why Why did you wait this long and potentially piss him off? But then two, why not add years? Because they had a team two year team option for Dak Prescott that they turned down, right? And so, between Dak and CD, I would choose CD. I mean, I I obviously I'd choose CD Lamb too, but if you're going to sign him instead of trade him. So like, if we're not blowing it up, what are we doing here? You know, like, what are we doing? I it, guess keeping him Jerry, for a it's new the Jerry rookie Jones, would be good. It's but. the Jerry Jones special. They keep good. They keep name brand players, but they collect everything else. I don't know. It, it just, it just makes me a little bit confused. Like I actually, you know, understand if they, if they flat out said, Oh, we want to keep him for the next quarterback that comes in. Like if they have a plan, that would be one thing, but like it, now they're making, they have a $60 million cap hit this year for Dak Prescott and they didn't do anything. <sighs> it's like this deal makes it look like they're trying to contend at least right now. Uh, it, it just makes no sense. The The Cowboys need a GM. Yeah. They need a GM. All right. This is from, the, this is from ESPN. The deal includes a $38 million signing bonus, the largest ever given to a wide receiver, and $100 million, $100 million guaranteed. He was going to play on the franchise, his, the fifth-year option of his rookie deal, with that was $18 million, and become a free agent after the season. But the deal will last until 2028. So they got him long-term, barring anything cap-crunching. I, I think, uh, I'll, overall, I'll rate this as like an A-tier, tri- like A-tier extension. Well, they finally, I just need they to finally know did something what the, the quarterback position is. Yeah. I just need to know what the quarterback yeah. situation is going to look like. Gotcha. All right. Next, Packers acquire Malik Willis in a trade with the Titans. You traded a seventh or round seventh pick round for it. Pick. I mean, honestly, seventh round picks, they're relatively worthless uh, at times. Mm-hmm. You, you could have a really big hit, but for what we needed him, it's obvious that Green Bay just didn't trust Clifford or uh, I already forgotten his name, yeah, the other guy in the preseason. And so they traded for somebody that I think at least has some upside to develop. I don't think he's going to develop into a starting caliber player. I don't think the Packers think that, but he could develop into a nice franchise backup quarterback. Someone that can at least do something with an offense, right? And I don't think Clifford can do that. I, yeah. mean, I, don't, I don't think that um, they came to the conclusion that they wasted a fifth round draft pick on him. And so they cut him and tried to do the seventh round draft pick for Willis. But I'll say this, so, is what, this is on ESPN. Is possible the Packers will keep Clifford or Pratt on the roster, at least until they can get Willis up to speed on the offense? It might be too much to ask of Willis to serve as the number two quarterback for the season opener against the Eagles in 11 days. However, a source said Clifford was likely gone, meaning he probably would be released by Tuesday's mandatory roster cut to 53. Yep, and, and he was. And he was. The letter goes on to say that in Tennessee, Willis would have been the number three quarterback behind Will Levis and Mason Rudolph. So, fresh start for Willis. You know, you can't complain about that. All around, I'd say A-plus trade. Uh, there were Packers fans basically like having – meltdowns basically being like we got this guy for so cheap he's gonna be the next tom brady practically and i was like chill out packers fans we just got a backup quarterback that you know that was the whole point <laughs> i mean that was just the whole point yeah 
All right, next. Char Chiefs reach a deal with Juju Smith-Schuster. That is a reunion I do not want to happen for the sole reason that they do not need reunions happening with them. Okay, so he hear me out, right? Mm -hmm. Juju Smith-Schuster signs a whatever year deal with them. Like um, let, let me check, let me check, let me check. Um, I believe it's just going to be a one-year deal. Yeah, there's no... I believe. Yeah, just they just agreed to contract terms. It's probably going to be a one-year deal. Yeah, so they have this one-year deal. You know, they fire their social media coordinator. He plays, he plays wide receiver, right? But he's also the social media coordinator, and he does TikToks with Taylor Swift. Don't, no, don't. This is why we don't need a reunion. <laughs> we don't need Juju TikToks with Ju with Patrick Mahomes, Shit, Travis Kelsey, and... Ugh. In the gritty that's, with, uh, that's hell with upon Taylor itself. Swift. No, I don't need that. <laughs> uh, hey. Moving on from that nightmare scenario that I hope never happens. Source. Well, we, hey, Nick Chubb uh, starts on the PUP list out at least four games. Hey, he was hurt four or five games into the season, right? Two, actually. Two. Yeah, it, it makes sense. He had I think a, he's going to have a bad year to start this year, but he'll be I back this hope, week, the next year. I hope that he comes back and is great. I want that for him. Oh, the, I he, need I need that to happen. If I had a dream scenario, the number one person I would want on my team for free. So say we say the Packers got anybody for free, Nick Chubb would be in the top five players that I would want. Um, unfortunately he got hurt and I was watching that game. I was devastated. Me and my dad were actually watching because of Nick Chubb. We were watching because of Nick Chubb and he, we walked in, uh, we wa watched him screw his leg up and it was honestly like, devastating. It was, he, the, him it was and, the exact and, same kind of injury he had while he was at Georgia. Yeah. So Nick Chubb on the very, very, very unlikely, uh, chance you watch this. Praying for you, buddy. You're, you're awesome. <laughs> Honestly. Honestly, hoping for the best for you. Hall of Fame career after a knee injury like that. That'd be amazing. All right. Uh, and next list. Next thing on the on the on the news list that you have. Chiefs down. waving was, Kadarius Tony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was gonna try to like segue in this behind the Juju thing. I was like, well, we just we figured out who. Kadarius Tony was replaced with. <laughs> Less than two years after delivering one of the iconic plays in franchise history, wide receiver Kadarius Tony is on the players being cut by the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, one punt return, and somehow he's the hero. Uh, I can't say it wasn't deserved. <laughs> man has hey, man had hands made a stone. Yeah, dude. It's like he oiled himself up with butter before every single game. Like he just, he just had puts his hands up and then sonic sound effect as it bounces out of his hands. And the, I'm about All to right. say, and he was talking so much shit after he left the Giants for it too. All right, and this life is comes the, at you fast. This is the last one I have for NFL, and it's probably the biggest story. One of the NFL's greatest quarterbacks. Has been cut. Patriots Bailey have Zappy cut rest. Bailey Zappi. Uh, end of an era indeed in New England. XFL bound. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, Bailey Zappi, you will be missed. You will be very missed. Um, resign, sign with the Bucks. actually. Sign with the Bucks practice squad. That'll help. You'll love Mike Evans. <laughs> I, I I have a grudge against him because I think Mac Jones is way better than Zappy, but the the absolutely terrible offensive room that was the uh uh Patriots there like really, really, really they it's like they were just kicking Mac Jones at the balls repeatedly <laughs> on the sidelines. That's like basically he had what was no happening. Chance. He had He's two, like, oh, I threw a good had, pass. Just kicks had, him right in the nuts. He had two stooges as his offensive coordinators. People who have never coached offense a day in their life Dude, the thing, after the his thing rookie is, year. Is, then after that, he had Bill fucking O'Brien, 
who went right back to the college ranks last th- after this year. Freaking, freaking! Um, I I was talking about un, uh, underrated quarterbacks. I I said off the top of my head, off Mac off the top of my Jones, head. Just Mac I Jones is sorry. the most underrated. He is the most underrated quarterback. And I will die on that hill. I, I don't like the Patriots. I don't like the Patriots. But watching him out there with a bottom five offensive line with the worst receiving core. And then they, with they had the Mike Gusecki on there. Sta- with on the worst end. coaching staff on top of it. Yeah, with the worst t- uh, with the worst uh, uh, coaching tree you could ever have. With Bill Belichick at head coach. And then you have people, like, just to show you how crazy it was. They had Hunter Henry. Johnny Smith, maybe uh, they had someone else. Johnny Smith uh, was gone. It was Hunter Henry and Mike Isicki. Yeah, but they had Mike Isicki, and they never played Mike Isicki. They barely ever played him because he couldn't block. Like he, he was, they never. He he was like never in, and he was decent. He was like he was decent at the Dolphins. He was, but why do you think they got rid of him and replaced him with Smythe? I mean, but I mean, you get what I'm saying is is yeah, is saying. a better like, receiving threat than Hunter Henry. Like, I, I get He's better you're, receiving. I get threat. what you're saying. I get it. It's like why trade for someone and never use them? Like, and it, it just it was so bad. And the thing is, is like you don't see somebody like he was. If you look at some of his plays, like he was oh, he was under throwing people by like 20 yards. Like he 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 was so far off. I think he was just shell shocked like you're out there and you've been told you can't do it you every single play you're being threatened to bench if you throw an interception you're gonna get this benched rings for back to what, this rings back to what we said about to what Tua said about his coaching staff last week that is bill belichick stuff to a t almost it sounds like like if it, he said that brian or Flo- worse if it, if they if they if, if that if what Tua said about brian flores is true then yeah apparently a Apparently, there's no excuse for Bill Belichick assistance. They all they're all just cancerous lumps, aren't they? My my dream scenario. I know he's at Jacksonville right now. My dream is scenario: that Mac tra- Jones. He goes to the Raiders. He's traded or to the Vikings. The Vikings traded the, to the Vikings. No, the Raiders. No, the Raiders would be better for him. The Vikings just drafted their long next term. quarterback. Well, long, long term, yes, but short term, he goes there and he balls out with the uh, Jefferson. Justin Justin Jefferson. Because I want him to prove that with weapons, like he's he's good. I mean, this say, and he went ten and six his rookie. He went yeah, ten and six his like, rookie year. Like he's not terrible. Like how, he was just ruined. There's a difference. How the hell do you turn a rookie of the year into? Not even what well, he close to a rookie year, but he was a Pro Bowl. Close right? to rookie year, but yeah. How do you turn a Pro Bowl rookie quarterback into? What a bottom five quarterback in the league? It just bottom makes no five, sense. like, eh. it just Again, makes no sense. I do not blame Daniel Jones for what happened. It was easily on his coaching staff. All right, <laughs> Mac Jones. <laughs> All right. All right. So college I'm, football speed run. Yeah, college Duke's football. Duke's gonna lose their game. Co- college football news first. First thing, UConn might be joining the Big Twelve soon. That is it. All I can say is that if the Big Twelve chooses that. They are stupid. Why would you take UConn, who's only had like two winning seasons in the past few years, as a member? Terrible decision. Then, Deion Sanders banned a reporter from asking questions at one of his pressers. For like no good reason other than the fact that he was criticizing the team. Oh, boo-hoo. We have freedom of press for a reason. If you don't like what he has Colorado to say. Is Colorado going to be a good team this year? Get the well, I mean, fuck out of my room. <laughs> can never return. That's almost what it is. He just didn't take the question. He was like, yeah, I won't take any of those ridiculous. I don't want to take a question like that. Uh, and then he went to somebody else who was talking about Aflac. He was like, yeah, what about Aflac? <laughs> like, to like a paid question almost. <laughs> like, he does a mid roll in the middle of his fucking. According to the post, report. a Colorado Athletic Department media relations staffer told a newspaper that it took issue with Keeler's references to Sanders as a de- de- deposition Dion, the Bruce Lee of BS, and a false prophet, and it uses a phrase such as Planet Prime, the Dion Kool Aid, and Circus. The ban is indefinite, according to the post. 
The decision comes okay, to accept the news conference. Some of those Sanders is pretty accused bad. Keeler of always being on the attack. What happened to get you like this? Added Sanders. No, I'm serious. I want to help you because it's not normal. During the exchange, Keeler asked multiple times if he could ask a football question, and Sanders declined before moving to a reporter who asked about his birthday plans. The reporter before Keeler at the news conference asked Sanders, how important is it for everyone to have Affleck as a part of their life? Sanders is a paid spokesperson for the insurance company. <laughs> In his column after the news conference, Keeler described Sanders as a confident man who suddenly looked and acted and sounded afraid. According to the Post, Sanders has unique language in his contract that says he is required to speak only with mutually agreed upon media. In his social media post, Denver Post sports editor Michael Schubert says it's well within anyone's rights to not take questions from Denver Post sports recorder and columnists. The reason it's listed here by CU, however, are entirely subjective. It would be more accurate to say we don't like Sean Keeler's critiques of our program. When asked for clarification by the Post, a sports Should have a Colorado sports information staffer instead. told the newspaper Keeler had not violated any specific media policies. <laughs> Sanders has a history of a coach uh, as a coach of using his influence to ban reporters from asking questions about his program. In 2021, a Mississippi Clarion Ledger reporter was barred from covering Jackson State, where Sanders was coach, and at Southwestern Athletic Conference Media Day, a day after the Clarion Ledger published a story related to a court filing about an incoming recruit who had charged it with with. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> I can't speak today. A day after the Clarendon Ledger published a story of, related to a court filing about an incoming recruit who had been charged with assaulting a woman. Sanders' second season as coach begins this Thursday against North Dakota State. I will laugh very hard if North Dakota State wins that game. All right. I got, it sounds like he's soft. Yeah. I want, I want to cover two football games that happened. College football is officially in swing. And we saw Florida State absolutely bite it in Ireland against the Yellow Jackets. DJ Uyugule is a terrible, terrible quarterback. Haynes King, he threw less passes and less yards, but he ran for 54 and got his team into great position to win the game. Not even close. DJ Uyugule, then the Florida State, you guys are AP poll frauds get out of my face and this i just chose because i'm a part-time new mexico state fan montana state scored our first fcs over fbs upset of the year by taking down new mexico at home they won by four points tommy mellett threw two touchdowns and they had three separate running backs get into the end zone Montana University or Montana State University would Montana be pretty State. funny to go. <laughs> would be pretty funny also, to go. Also, I like to clarify. To college I like to clarify. Tommy Mellett also scored a rushing touchdown that was added. Then I'm I'm apologizing, but New Mexico. Oh Lord, the over on the line was actually for Montana State by 14 points. They were favored to win this, and I find that hilarious. Now, that's it for all the news. I do want to leave you guys yeah. with three certified SDS predictions for college football. This is for this week. Akron will defeat Ohio State. I don't care by how much it will happen. <laughs> Idaho will beat Oregon. I don't care how it happens. It will happen. New Mexico State will blow out southeastern Missouri by 40 points. That's all. And I'm probably going to get flamed on. I'm going to have to watch. I'm going to get flamed on for this. But those are three see. certified SDS predictions for you. Disagree with them all you want. If I end up being right, fantastic. If I end up being wrong, I can easily say I was just shitting around. It's a win-win. That being said, that is it. I think that's a good, that's a wrap. That is it for this episode of Battle for the Bay. Um, like, like and subscribe if you want to. Click the button to get notifications of when I upload. These episodes are going to come out every Wednesday or every Thursday. Um, new schedule for me since I'm back at college. But uh, feel free to leave a comment down below if we are heavily wrong about what you, uh, what you think is right. Um, I don't have anything else much yeah. to say. So I hope you guys have a good day for those who pop in and watch this. And we will see you guys next week. See ya. Peace.